Hello and welcome to Dishing with Divorce. My name is Mandy Pullenbar and I am one of Vesta's concierges. And today I have the pleasure of having Anthony Quintino with me. And he is a relationship and divorce coach for Vesta. And I'm so excited to have him as my guest today as we dish on divorce and just basically life in general. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excited to be here. Yeah, I'm super excited. So Anthony and I have actually been talking for about 20 minutes about assorted things. And we're like, all right, let's just get this started because these push, are yeah. Push the button. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much, Anthony. So how long have you been with us now? I think we're right at the two year, two and a half year mark, maybe at the most. Wow. Definitely two year mark. As of this last month, actually, yeah, that's two years. Oh, that's amazing. And you are part of the Baltimore hub. Baltimore, and I'm also in San Antonio. Okay, awesome. Yeah, two hubs. Yay. And how has your experience been so far? It's interesting because I'm still the only male coach in the whole program. And so I sometimes I'm proud of that. And sometimes I'm like, where are the dudes at? <laughs> that. And obviously, I, I see other coaches doing what they're doing, and I definitely think that it also speaks to the different focus that Vesta has and my focus. Mm. I'm a little more open to different spaces, not just going through the divorce, not just after the divorce. And I find that most males, especially, and it might have to do because we're guys and we're very resistant to getting support from other men. There's a mm. lot of what I see in my reality around coaching and divorce is most men are focusing on the post-divorce space as far okay. as coaching. And again, there's some that don't, but that's what I see more popular. It's just easier to grasp that. And I'm sure that's a whole hour we could talk about how easy it is to think that I'm finally going to work on myself, but I'm going to wait till the divorce is over, which is obviously mm -hmm. what we talk about you and I, when we have our conversations. So it's been a great experience getting exposed to different people at different stages and meeting them where they're at with Vesta. Yeah, it's incredible. And what I love that you're doing with your programs are these group sessions, and then they get to work privately with you as well. How did you come up with that? Yeah. So before I got into coaching professionally and charging money for it, I was really involved in a lot of community development my entire life. Huh. Growing up, I got involved in the Methodist church, mm -hmm. right? And I got very involved in leading youth programs, youth ministry, going off to church camp on the weekend. And I would be like the head dude sometimes. There's a whole system to going up in the ranks. Mm. But then I, when I went through my own stuff later in life, my mom went through her second divorce when I was in high school. I joined the military. And then I went to acting school. I was in military and massage therapy school. I learned about it and I became a Reiki, te Reiki practitioner and now Reiki master 20 years later. I eventually fell into different other practices and eventually I was leading a Buddhist community over three metro over the Metroplex. And I was the only guy that wasn't even born in the practice, but yeah, you know, this oh, little God. army of young men, they were about, talking about being a Buddhist and teach. In fact, I have my Gohonzon still here with me. I'm a life. It's with me for life. It goes with me everywhere. Oh, wow. And then eventually a lot of facilitation training I got when I joined men's communities in the nonprofit okay. sector, which got me exposure to men here, Canada, Mexico. And I even had a guy in Japan that I got one of my first clients was also from this group. So a lot of experience in group settings. Then mm -hmm. when I went to the private side and started charging money, I was getting mostly clients that were female at the beginning. They were mm -hmm. entrepreneurs dealing with mindset shifts of being an employee mm -hmm. to now being a business owner and understanding accountability can't be your only focus because right. You're going to put yourself in a grave if the only goal is to be accountable to your clients. Yeah. We had to put a higher priority on integrity mm -hmm. to survive in entrepreneurship. Moving from that and just really finding that I missed both. I want mm -hmm. both. And when you look it up, you can see the benefits of both. One-on-one, -on -one, you can go deep. There's a level of safety there. There could be a, a healthy level of confrontation when the trust mm -hmm. is there. You get to be the mirror mm -hmm. or a man or a woman across the screen wherever you are in the world. Also a stage of, I believe, then take you to the next level. So okay. for me, the next level is actually the group work because then we get to work on whatever epiphany we've been working on for 30 years, 20 years, or 10 minutes, 
Yeah. And now we get to work on it in a safe space with other sometimes men, sometimes women, depending on whether it's co-ed or not. So I find it just, it's a really great place to meet anybody where they're at. We offer an option that does both versus doing one or the other. Right. And I think what's so great about it too, is that you're bringing people together that are like-minded that maybe wouldn't have otherwise had paths cross. And I know that, I mean, it's been, I think, 14 years since my divorce, but one of the big things for me when I was going through it was finding that new community and finding new friendships and rebuilding that life. So you're creating that. And in addition to the fact that maybe some of these people have gone through a divorce, they're also like-minded and have similar thoughts and feelings. Oh, I def yes. Thank you. And I want to comment on that. So what's interesting is I don't use the word divorce mm. in almost any of my marketing. Yeah. On my actual website for my Awaken Your Reality group, the word divorce maybe shows up once. Okay. Or maybe in the video when I'm talking about it. Yeah. And when I have my full group going of men and women, <laughs> every single person is about to go through a divorce, in the middle of a divorce, or they're post-divorce, and we never talk about the divorce. And so what I'm hearing from the feedback I'm getting is that most people have already gone to a group setting that's focused on whatever the problem is, right? Mm -hmm. Parental alienation, lack of self-worth, trauma, right? Mm -hmm. Big words being thrown out. And by the time they come to me, whether they're for the group or for the one-on-one -on -one coaching, they're always saying, I'm ready to drop all that stuff, Anthony. I don't care yeah. that he or she was an narcissist. I don't care anymore. I just yeah. want to let go. And I'm like, great. So what I provide is a group that is literally solution-based, mm -hmm. not let's focus on the problem and agree on one unified way to overcome the problem. No, literally, we use the problem as an awareness piece and we pivot away from it as soon as possible. And then we get to see in a shared experience when one person breaks that four minute mile, right? When one person breaks through by literally removing any belief that anything's going wrong by using the power of assumption, law of assumption, their life changes really quickly. And then the men and women of different ages start going, wait, so I can literally change what I believe in the moment, in the middle of a fight and stop talking and let them run out of steam and love them anyway. Okay, then they try it. So yeah, I love being able to have the flexibility to go deep and also be able to spread the experience out. So the one-on-one -on -one hybrid model with a group setting really works well. Yeah, I think it's just so beautiful that you're, um, you're able to show up in both because I think that it's really special skill set to be able to be aware in a group, right? Tune into, tap into that whole group and then also yeah. be able to tap into that one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it, that really is showing something in terms of your ability as a coach. Well, you know? thank you. and I want to just, again, I think we talked about this off of the, off the record part, right? So the challenge for me to do both is to mm -hmm. realize whether I'm looking at you or whether it's just one person that's mm -hmm. brand new or I've been with for six months or whether it's 15 people, I really believe to keep myself safe and protect you, the mm -hmm. individual. I look at my screen, every single face, they all have a set of eyes. And those are all just mirrors to me. So if I start getting triggered or if I start getting distracted or nervous mm -hmm. or my imposter syndrome comes, I'm like, wait a minute, is this coming from you? Or is it my projection from me coming into you? And whether it's delusional or not, it's what keeps it safe and authentic and extremely intimate because then I'm talking to myself and I'm the best person to smack myself <laughs> upside the head, to do a, a mindset shift. And I'm the best person to tell myself, I love you. And to say to men and women on a call, it's okay. I still love you. I know I'm talking to myself at the same time. And that just really makes it more authentic. And we get through the message and all of a sudden we all start rising together and it's a really it's like magic i just love it i'm addicted we just had a little uh, technical snafu but hopefully a anthony's beautiful response was caught on video before i got disconnected and if not the world still spins <laughs> it, it, we just keep moving on yes we do just keep moving on 
Oh my goodness. We were talking about your wonderful group work. We were talking about the breakthroughs that people have and and you are doing a masterclass coming up soon for for folks that are curious about your possibly joining your group. And tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I have a masterclass coming up on March the 2nd, and I've really been looking at everything I teach my clients in group and one-on-one and understanding what is the foundation? Like what really is one singular thing that anchors it all together, both Mm -hmm. what I'm teaching and what I've learned my entire life. And I realize it's affirmations because since I truly believe and I'm teaching and then we get to prove the results is that we are always creating Mm -hmm. instead of looking at things as a good or bad right or wrong, understand that I am always affirming something. I'm Mm -hmm. either affirming my empowerment or I'm affirming my disempowerment. I'm affirming my anger or I'm affirming my joy, my bliss. And so it's really given me opportunity to just to really go down to the simpler language to teach the higher level concepts I'm teaching. And it's really doing very well. I've created an ebook for it and a course, and it's making it easier for me to teach more people yeah. in a faster way. And that's so that maybe can't all do the one-on-one coaching or the group coaching, mm. or they don't understand the higher level conversation. So really just understanding, teaching the basics of what an affirmation really is versus mm-hmm. a mantra and understanding why you think they don't work for you sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So that we can walk out of this masterclass with all the basic knowledge and a lot of advanced techniques to actually create your very own affirmations, which go way above and beyond anything you could download or listen to, because I'm literally teaching people to create their own personal affirmations. And then they go further and record their very own either Mm -hmm. voice or video, because then it becomes mirror work. And you can tell me how great I am, Mandy, all day long. And I'll believe you sometimes, but one, I'm not in a good space. The only person that's really going to get through to me is the guy in the mirror. And so mirror work is one thing I teach. And by teaching affirmations on our cell phone, we have a walking mirror that we can confront Mm -hmm. our BS any time of day and break Mm -hmm. through. So yeah, that's what the class is about. That's amazing. So tell me what the difference is then between a mantra and a affirmation. Beautiful. And the first chapter is always explain both of those things. So yeah. Really, it comes down to an affirmation is a positive statement, it tends to be an I am statement. And I say that it's more about the physical world, right? Mm-hmm. I am strong, I am profitable, all these kinds of things. I'm, I'm going to win today at work. Mm-hmm. That to me is more mission, what's more warrior energy. That's yes. literally picking up things and interacting with my physical reality or my interpretation of physical reality. Okay. Now, a mantra is more of a way of life. It's more ritualistic. It adds a spiritual component to it. Ah. It takes the affirmation, which is more mindset, which is applicable to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But for those who really want to go the next step and see maybe there's more going on in this world than what my five senses are telling me, Mm -hmm. the mantra really makes a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. The impact of that is that when we have the affirmation married with a mantra, is all of a sudden now we're not repeating the words mind just mindlessly. They become a kind of drone in a way of actually living your life mm-hmm. through the mantra, because now we're walking into meetings at work or with somebody that we're in love with, or we're in conflict with, and we can actually take that affirmation and goose it and know that it's impacting in ways that I could never really fathom. And all of a sudden mm-hmm. it's a mantra. And that's just really yeah. how I separate the two and it raise the stakes. Right. Yep. If I see things through a spiritual lens past the veil of reality, I'm stricter on my mindset. So yeah, mm-hmm. hope that answers it for you. Yeah, no, that's great. And it actually, while you were saying that, it made me think of another piece that sometimes I, I see coaches do is creating that mission statement for yourself. And then I thought, okay, I wonder if the mission statement is also that warrior energy. Like I 
the I show up authentically and with kindness. So it's almost I think of it as like a business, more of a business thing. Yeah. And yeah, I got to add on to that. So the mission piece is taught in a lot of coaching arenas, mm -hmm. period. So we're not messing with that. What I find that's different is that people tend to look for the vision mm -hmm. or the mission. Now, when we have a vision, that's where we bring the spiritual component in, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're talking about that sovereign energy, the part that we just really can't fathom. And we have a vision for our life, right? The ideal that we're, that we're leaning towards. That is something that we can hold on to, that I hold on to, whether I have a bad day or not. Mm -hmm. On the days that I can't serve my mission, on the days that I feel like I'm a total failure, a bad mm -hmm. man, bad dad, all the badness, all the stuff mm -hmm. comes up within me. That's reacting to my mission. That's thinking about things in the physical world and judging myself. Mm -hmm. When I get past that, or how do I get past that faster is I really know my truth. I'm sacred. Mm -hmm. I'm one with the creator. Whatever I want, the creator wants for me. That goes toward my vision. So if I want to believe that no matter what I've gone through, I am still better than and more important than these events that have happened. I'm more than just a man. I'm more than just a father. I'm more than just this meat suit. That brings up the vision now. And mm -hmm. what happens, I find, is that when we look at things as one or the other, and we go, oh, I can be spiritual. I can have a vision. But when there's challenges, I'm going to go into mission. Start hustling and pushing and using all this effort, which of course in our attraction based universe doesn't work because we get back based on the results of how hard we push away. Yeah. There's still fingers pointing at us when we point at somebody else. Understanding that we want to find that sweet spot of understanding how we integrate while we have the mission on our planet mm -hmm. in our lifetime and how do we align it with the vision. Yeah, And they are two different things. So the trick is not to see them as one or the other, but to find the paradox. Yeah. I right? find you the never blending. Really have an answer for either one. Yeah. Sitting in the middle is yeah. a great sign of emotional intelligence, spiritual maturity, and mm -hmm. our ability to handle things and be happier in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Vision and mission go hand in hand. If you create the statements differently. Yes. An affirmation is way more mission based. Yeah. The vision is beyond. Right. So is it almost like the vision is connected to the mantra in a way? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I might need to have an, an affirmation to get through my day because mm -hmm. things change, things happen. I'm experiencing conflict. Mm -hmm. I got to muscle through. I got to be a human being. I got to yeah. play a role. So right. I'm going to affirm whatever it takes to get through it. Now, how do I know whether that's a good affirmation, whether I'm doing good in the world? Mm -hmm. Now, of course, if I'm looking at outside influences, nothing I do is going to be right for everybody. It used to be eat apple a day, keeps the doctor away. Then they say it causes diabetes. Now we're saying eat apples again. We can come up with any label we want <laughs> and watch social media within six weeks or six days or six months. It's all going to come. The same influencer that we're going crazy for will contradict themselves because they got to mm -hmm. make more content. Yeah. We have to look at how we align it before we make mm -hmm. a decision. If we're aligned with the vision, we can do our best to trust that when we are in our mission with the affirmation that it's going to work out for the highest good of all involved, right. yeah. not just I'm raging it against the machine. It's going to all balance out in the end. No, <laughs> you want to align it to a vision so you can make mistakes and know that it's all going to work out anyway. Yeah. You said Rage Against the Machine, and I immediately thought about the song. And I was like, I love that song when I go running. <laughs> I haven't run in years, but I remember that was on my playlist because that was just a, I don't know, just pushed you. But pushing yourself too far, right, in 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 anything, I think, it, it, it isn't healthy. Yeah. Have you read the book, The Untethered Soul? Yes. So I was listening to it on the drive down to have lunch with my dad today. And it was really interesting how some of the comments about pain and how we do everything to avoid pain, right? Whether it be the, un the unhealthy stuff, right? Or over-exercising or eating or drinking or 
go down the rabbit hole and how like really to get to the other side of pain is that you have to go through it. And I thought that was so beautiful. And I I was just curious what you thought of that, the idea of having to walk through uncomfortable stuff to get to, to get to that place of having breakthrough. (sighs) That's like a three hour conversation. So number one, (laughs) I always recommend my clients to get that book because Mm -hmm. Let me back up a second. Now I have to explain this. So I started shifting to more spirituality in my coaching because a few years ago, I started asking my clients who were with me six months to nine months after the divorce was final. I was like, Hey, I'm ready to push. I'm ready to go big. I really have to get more focused. Like, why are you still here? Yeah. Yeah. And I wrote down the notes and it took me about three weeks to get every single one of these clients who were with me long after the divorce was over. Mm -hmm. I basically said, I said that if I fired you, what's the juice? What's the thing that I taught you that's been the most impactful that you want to remember for 20 years when you're like, Mm -hmm. Oh, that guy taught me this one thing. If I was to say I'm done, why are you here? And I started listening to them and it was, it became very triggering to me to hear the feedback. I've been told about life changing experiences before, but to hear people explain how their ability to see things differently in the middle of the most painful moments of their life. And literally because they saw it differently, their thoughts were different, their feelings, their body reacted differently. And then things started to change before their very eyes. So I had this moment when I I went to my whiteboard and saw all these words and I started crying. Mm -hmm. I started shaking when I started putting it together. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And what it made me realize, I have photos of what I wrote on the wall because on on my whiteboard, because I went into a four day spiritual activation (laughs) right after that. And it was my seventh one. And I realized I've been repressing my spirituality so much. Mm -hmm. But the truth was I was still attracting clients who they were coming for the mindset work and they Mm -hmm. were going through a spiritual awakening, even though I was trying not to bring up spirituality because I had some kind of veil of, of inappropriateness around it. And then I wake up and realize everyone else teaching spirituality now. I'm like, where did I (laughs) just go? So that I was repressing something, but yeah, I find that Michael Singer explains the process for a spiritual awakening without needing breath work without needing hours of meditation, without going through traumatic, heroic events where our back's against the wall and we lose everything. Michael Singers explains it very simply with no dogma. And I find it's a really, really great book for anybody who has wondered what is to this mindset work? I'm noticing things change in my reality. They don't fit what I believed. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Go read that book. (laughs) Yeah. Because the first we find out is that our conscious mind is a psychopath. (laughs) How many times I I, want to hear your part too, like the cause of concierge, how many times have you heard? And I heard, I know what's going on. I know that he or she is doing this because Mm -hmm. I feel it in my body. I'm like, yeah, you create reality that way. So of course you feel it in your body. That's the excuse for you're going to use. You're going to keep creating it. So yeah, there you go. I'd love to hear your feedback on that one. Yeah, no, I know for myself that I just have to, it goes back to those like affirmations. If I start, if we, I, the voice of wisdom and the voice of judgment, right? And if I switch to the voice of judgment and the voice of judgment never says anything nice to me, right? It's always... I've done something wrong, or if I've let someone down, or you're just going to screw it up anyways. And if I have that going on, I have to like immediately hit pause and say, okay, wait a second. Like, how did I get off of alignment here? Where did I take a wrong turn? And then try to like, you know, get, get back on the path. And I will all find that I do the, I am powerful. I am the master of my thoughts, I am kind and compassionate. Then 
slowly starts to turn turn me back. But yeah, it's just it's it, the mind is just it's amazing. And it's amazing. It's and yet amazing. we're not our mind. That's the thing. Like it is amazing. Right? It is still a physical thing that's happening as a part of our infinite experience. On one hand, we have the brain. It does all these things. And when our hormones are doing this and synapses are doing that, and we form neural pathways and we can all talk about the fancy words. And at the end of the day, we know that if we put our bodies under this, the intense microscopes to do these things, that we see there's more light and space between our cells than there is matter. Yeah. We are actually emanating luminescence. We are energy and we are all connected. So back to the question about Michael Singer talking about accepting pain. Mm. Again, we can talk about any coach out there, any spiritual guru between now and back then, back from long before mm. Michael Singer. I love that. He just says, look, the thought in your head is a thought. Mm -hmm. It's not you. And then we go back to the basic with this kind of work is that you are not your thoughts. You are attaching meaning to those thoughts. Then you're having a reaction based on your assumption of what that thought means, mm -hmm. right? Every time somebody, especially in the discernment phase, mm -hmm. right? Anthony, help me get divorced. I'm overwhelmed. Great. They start doing mindset work and pivoting. Mm -hmm and gaining control over their conscious thoughts, we always find this wonderful phenomenon. They really start believing this stuff even further. Okay, great. Let's do the pros and cons list, right? <laughs> my pros to, to go, da, 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 da. pages, pages, right? Mm -hmm. I, my reasons to stay, half a page, right? Mm -hmm. Great, so you're gonna leave, you're gonna file. Great, we come with an accountability piece, mm -hmm. talk to the attorney, write mm -hmm. out, do your homework, where are you going to present? And a week mm -hmm. goes by, did you do it? Oh, no, no. Why? Because all of a sudden, even though we did all the things that you're supposed to do to make a decision, mm -hmm. make a goal, once we make that conscious decision, which means we stopped avoiding the decision in the mm -hmm. first place, make a mm -hmm. decision within 24 hours or two or three days, the conscious mind comes up with a, oh, but wait. Yeah. Oh, but wait. Yeah. Oh, but wait. So the way I've internalized a lot of Michael Singer's teachings and everyone else's teachings is when I work with a man on the carpet, we're trying to let go of a limiting belief who mm -hmm. he is. When I'm looking, working with a woman on understanding, she's understanding like, how do I deal with my actual responsibility in this mm. versus the shame versus how do I get to the empowerment side of it where I'm empowered and happy, not empowered and angry. Yeah. Because there's two different things, right? Yeah. I teach this based on Michael Singer's stuff. Is it the conscious mind is always talking? Yes. We know that. That's in the book. So the next piece is this. We always have these radio signals. Mm -hmm. A million voices are going at one time. Mm -hmm. You and I have a habit of turning the volume up on some and down mm -hmm. on others. And so that answers why a thought may come up. Mm. when we're in a new relationship, right? either immediately or as we start getting closer and closer to being vulnerable and being intimate in the relationship, right. all of a sudden the honeymoon phase is gone. We think that we're dating the exact same person that you may have just gotten divorced from. And I'm like, that's the illusion. That's the conscious yeah. mind. Your job, the job of your conscious mind is to keep you alive, not happy. So we have to learn to find a different way Mm -hmm. process our thoughts to get in alignment mm -hmm. to start affirming yeah. from a place of empowerment versus delusion i think that's the way yeah. i answer that question but, but michael singer is one of my favorites to quote just because he keeps in plain simple english i love Eckhart tolle it's a yeah. little too flighty for some people yeah, right well, that was uh, something we were talking earlier and i said that there was a book that i had tried to read he, that was the author yeah and I said yeah to my dad, fantastic I go, I stuff i was like i have no idea what he was saying this was, gosh, this is when I was going through my divorce. So 14 years ago, and I just, I could, and then I think it was five or six years later, I read it and I was like, oh, okay. 
but I had also uh, done a lot of my own work. Yeah, exactly. Because your perception changes when you do your inner work. Absolutely. If all of my work is on the person I have conflict with, again, so back to the divorce space, if mm. all of my work is dependent on them changing, them telling me I'm right, them giving in, then long after the divorce is over, and we have that temporary moment of my Facebook post, I'm happy divorced AF party. What happens is something else kicks in. The subconscious mind then will create another opportunity <laughs> to manifest a problem again. Okay. And then the problem was never actually fixed. Now, unfortunately, we may already be in a new relationship thinking everything is great when the reality is that we don't know them yet. They don't know us. So it's easier for us to transmit unconditional love to a stranger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then once they get to know us more, we start thinking that there's a problem with them when really we're just seeing the problem that we're reflecting in them. And it takes three or four relationships after a divorce to realize, oh, maybe I need to do some work. <laughs> And then your actual perception of reality changes because yeah. you did the work. Yeah. In demand, the world does the work. Yeah. I have to tell you that my relationship with my ex-husband changed the minute that I started looking within. And today, it's obviously by no means perfect. We don't always see the eye, but we, I feel, have a great relationship. And that's because I... I did so much work on myself and I was able to see where I let the marriage down and the things that I did and how I sabotaged and, and then, and boy, talk about uncomfortable, right? But as a result of it, like now I feel like our relationship is really beautiful because I have let go of the things that I brought in from like my, my, the luggage from my childhood the luggage from like other yucky things that happened to me throughout my years. And but just say, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I did that when we were in a relationship. Yeah. I you mean, I like and, saying that the forgiveness yeah. piece is so huge. Yeah. So huge. I teach, a, a, I call it the self-love activator where I get the group or the individual clients to write down every single person that's ever hurt you. The lover. That's because mm -hmm. we're taught because in my work, I really get everyone to focus on two things, more prosperity, which is money yeah. and freedom and abundance mm -hmm. and more love. Yeah. Which of course, if you're in the spiritual space are exactly the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it also guarantees one big thing is that as we do the work, you are going to hit every single possible belief system that you have that's actually getting in the way. Mm -hmm. By focusing, so by saying, I'm going to do my best to actually attract and assume and bring more money into my life. Mm -hmm. If you say no, there's always a reason why. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be crazy rich. I don't want, I don't want to be selfish. All these belief systems are coming up. You make excuses to not want money to flow like water when that's true abundance. Mm -hmm. Or when it comes to relationships, the other side. I can't, I, I don't need to have this. I just want to be loved and respected. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. that's the one thing you're not going to get if that's the only thing you need because you're right. looking to be proven wrong, really proven mm -hmm. right. We assume based on our history, based on our past, that someone's not going to love us or that money doesn't grow on trees because of X, Y, Z, all this data from the past just affirms the assumption. Mm -hmm. We wonder why we're still broke. We wonder right. why nothing lasts in our relationships, even though we thought we learned so much. Yeah. We learned those labels. We learned about yeah. safe space and we learned about proper language. And all of a sudden we're demanding other people do it, but we're not doing it. So yeah, right. you gotta do the internal work and then it just yeah. gets easier. People leave Absolutely. and stay and you're all in harmony because we attract who we are. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And one of the things that we were talking about before we hit record was the the law of assumption and law the law of attraction. And I would, I'd love to learn a little bit more and I'm sure other people would like to hear more about the, the law of assumption. Sure. So the way, so law of attraction, like attracts like, mm -hmm. and it's 
really popular and it's more famous because of this, the movie, the documentary, The Secret. Yeah. The book came out. Now, there are many other universal laws. There's 10, that every, 10 to 15 that everyone kind of agrees on that are in mm -hmm. this spiritual access in their conscious kind of way, living this spiritual experience in the meat suit. Mm -hmm. right? so, law of attraction, yes, it's the vibration. Like attracts like. Mm -hmm. Universal law. I find that law of attraction is more about letting go of resistance, mm -hmm. finding peace and ease, which is definitely a skill that we all need and that I've worked with most of my life. I was introduced to law of attraction when I was like 11, 12, 13, when someone got me a book, excuse me, my life is waiting. And I we read this book yeah. and I started seeing things differently. Wow. I was a child of divorce. My mom was in a new, yeah. new relationship with the guy who was older and he, he had, he didn't connect with me at all. He talked at me, not to mm -hmm. me kind of stuff. Yeah. I was told to be quiet all mm -hmm. the time. And I, if I was getting in trouble. And I was being scolded. I had to know when the pause was mm -hmm. to know whether to say yes, sir, no, sir. Because if I did either one wrong or not say at the right time, I would get the hello, am I talking to a brick wall or I'm not done talking. Yeah. So I was really depressed and this book really opened my eyes. But then when the book was closed, I didn't see a way to actually do it in real life. Interesting. So I go through my life thinking the law of attraction doesn't work. Mm. It doesn't work. So in a nutshell, law of attraction speeds up momentum. Okay. Because we get out of the way. Now, what happens when we speed up momentum and nothing else changes? We get more of the same thing. Right. Now it's all a gift. So if I think mm -hmm. I'm having money issues or that I can't have a loving relationship because mm -hmm. I use the law of attraction, I'm eventually going to manifest the perfect everything. The process does tend to take more time mm -hmm. because as I'm increasing my momentum, I'm getting more of the same thing. And the universe is asking me to get specific now. Yes. Now we're talking about law of assumption. Mm -hmm. Now we're not talking about I'm prosperous. Now we're saying, no, I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars. We're getting specific, uh, okay. which also ties into all this. We have to ask for what we want okay. and assume the sale. Assume okay. we have the wish fulfilled. Prayer is really the art of believing you already have it. Yeah. So instead of praying from lack, mm -hmm. we want to be praying from, thank you. I already have it. Mm. And then we feel better. And then it's only a matter of time and persisting in that belief until it actually manifests in our reality. That's way more on the side of law of assumption, meaning I can see my partner yelling and screaming and saying obscenities about me, maybe even in court. And I teach men to do this when they're in court and they're hearing things that are in a, a lie or an illusion and they're getting so upset, drop the assumption. Now I can look at my daughter's mother. Mm -hmm. She's 15. My daughter's 15. We, it's been a long time. I can't do anything to change her. What I can do is I can change me right now. Why would I be upset with her for not willing to talk to me? Even though I teach people that have way worse situations they've ever had to overcome these obstacles to where now they're grateful for each other. Yeah. I have to release my attachment to need her to do that, to prove anything because she's a gift to me. Mm. She won't talk to me. She won't do any of the things that other people do. It's all about just the letter of the law. Mm. And if I focus on that, I'm making a poor assumption, right? Yeah. I'm assuming that I'm right and she's wrong. Well, now that means I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry because I, no matter what I learn, I will never assume to know better than somebody else's experience. Mm -hmm. Everyone is wrong. And when I work with couples, both two brothers who run a business together or two couples who are trying to make the marriage work or get mm -hmm. out of the divorce amicably. I'll tell mm -hmm. you what, when you're sitting with that distance and seeing them both argue, mm -hmm. they're both right. Yeah. They're both yeah. right. They're trying to prove that, that the other person's wrong mm -hmm. because they have an assumption. So assumptions are more powerful yeah. than the law of attraction. Law mm -hmm. of attraction is more like, I'm going to say beginner, 
right? Mm -hmm. Now the education is getting more popular around the law of assumption. We want to shift to law of assumption. Once you break through, mm -hmm. see there's, there can be more than just feeling good. Yeah. And you want to actually manifest things in your reality. Now mm -hmm. we're talking about law of assumption. Now, if you start studying Neville Goddard, he's extremely hard to understand. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that one over and over, I can read his text over and over again and maybe get 10% more understanding. Yeah. But yeah. The law of assumption I find works better for me. It works for high conflict situations. Cause yeah. now we got a, we have a real direct mirror in front of you because mm -hmm. you're making an assumption when you assume someone's out to get you, mm -hmm. someone wants to hurt you when they're lying to you, when mm -hmm. the system is broken, that is an assumption. Mm -hmm. It's going to be attracting more of the same thing into your yeah. life. So we have to pivot. So can you, can you change the assumption to have it be more positive? Like, I'm going to make the assumption that my soon to be ex husband's going to come up, come to court today in a positive, agreeable way so that we can settle things. It's a great question. So I like to look at that. It depends on where you're at. Okay. But I would say, yes, that's a great place to get to, right? I'm going to assume the best out of you, mm -hmm. no matter what. Think about that. That's turning the other cheek. Okay. That's having absolute faith and belief. Mm -hmm. So that is a really big expression of actually using the law of assumption in real conflict, not even see the conflict anymore. Right. Right? You only need to be aware of the conflict. Whatever hormones are produced by the body that caused us to have a triggered reaction only lasts 90 seconds anyway. Yeah. After that, we're not even being authentic anymore. We're keeping it alive. Yeah. So yeah. take the hit, assume the pain. What is this teaching me about me? Mm -hmm. Do that work, remove any BS in the way, and then take action against this thing that you don't like. Your behavior may still be exactly the same. Yep. But your intention and your energy, how you show up to the table, to the party, yeah. is going to be different doing the exact same action than if you're just triggered by the fact that it's the injustice of it all. Yeah. Right. So on one level, yes, we want to assume the best in our actual manifest reality by getting that specific. Mm -hmm. Now, a step down from that is to assume that I'm going to be okay. Uh, and that regardless is regardless of how the other person shows up. And that's and that why it actually feels powerful. It, thank you. I literally, I, one of my phrases is that how you show up matters more. Yeah. Because again, as a concierge doing this work that we do, how yeah. often do we hear someone say, and I'm going to say, how often have I said it in my life? Mm -hmm. I am a pure, happy, mm -hmm. I'm all these wonderful things, but you disrespect me. And I'll never forgive you. Yeah. Right? yeah. Where you're putting that prayer out into the world. So guess what? You're going to get opportunities yeah. to give yourself an excuse to be disempowered. <laughs> and right. you're making yourself triggered. The concept of gaslighting is I, I'm the one gaslighting myself. Right. You can use the words that uh -huh. we all agree in society means you're gaslighting me. But if I'm not triggered by them, if I do get triggered by them, that's me. Cause if, yeah. if what you say doesn't make sense to me, and it's not going to affect my ego, then I wouldn't be getting upset. So you say something to me, I get upset. I can take a breath and let it rise up. Yeah. Maybe a mm -hmm. tear or two. And then great. Now I can see you more clearly because yes. at the end of the day, you're worthy. Yeah. You're sacred. My biggest enemy is still here just trying to be happy. Yeah. Why would I take that away from them? Logic bombs get in the way, of course. We can say, mm -hmm. people will say to me, what about Hitler? What about this? Okay. Yeah, you're gonna bring that to the table, right? Yeah. We're on the wrong, we're, you're getting folks in the problem, which means we can't right. get it, we can't get there from right, there. Right, right. So Hitler there. clearly didn't do his internal work. Um, right. <laughs> um, when, it, when I know that I'm in, and I just also want to say that I'm a Reiki master as well. Not as long as you've been one, but it's been, I think, I, th I think it's been eight, eight or eight years, maybe. Wow. Yeah. 
And now it's, I really just use it for myself, for my family. And then if I know someone is going through a hard time, I'll send healing light. But the the intention is there. That's all we need. I know. I know. And I am, but I feel that when someone shows up to me angry, they present themselves angry. And if after that conversation, they leave and I feel, gosh, they must be really going through a hard time. I'm going to, I'm going to send, I'm going to see them with love and light and healing. And then it doesn't have any power. It doesn't consume me anymore, but I have to really have my own house in order to be able to do that. And that's a daily practice. And it falls under that self-care umbrella of that, like, regardless of how anyone else shows up in my life, I know that I'm okay and I'm safe and I'm... And I'm going to operate from that place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what you just said there. So I talk, I work with people on three different states of creation. There's Mm -hmm. a sleep creator, conscious, Mm -hmm. then there's the awake, and then there's the being. So three Mm -hmm. different phases. There's nine steps. When we are in the sleep creator stage, life is boring, it's mm-hmm. mundane. We are constantly consuming and regurgitating the same reality every day. Yeah. And we actually avoid the things that we need to do to change it mm-hmm. by suppressing our feelings, our emotions to fit in. Mm-hmm. So what happens, that means we are bored all the time mm-hmm. and then we get triggered <laughs> into conflict and the chaos and the crisis And we don't realize that that's the gift. Mm. That's the gift. Once we bypass that and let it go through our body, we realize this is just showing me the part of my life that I am playing small mentally, internally, spiritually. Then we have an opportunity to enjoy the journey again. And now we start dipping into the awake phase where we're a conscious creator. We're awake now. Yeah. We're realizing that our thoughts, our words, and our actions are all creating a reality, not just the actions. Now, self-care at this stage takes on a whole new meaning. The mission says, I have to eat, sleep, take breaks, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. one day off a week, take a shower. <laughs> That's the mission. <laughs> now, the vision, when we start breaking free from the matrix, we'll call it that for a minute, right? Mm-hmm. Self-care is now moment by moment. It's understanding that if I'm starting to share a story with you, talking bad about somebody, Mm. can I go beyond the old water cooler, sexual harassment, corporate videos where they said, oh, you need to be the one that stops that so that you're not contributing to harassment in the work and workplace, right? Mm. On the spiritual level, it's, Can I actually stop myself from talking bad about somebody? Can I stop myself from sharing that, you know what, this person's suffering? Mm -hmm. By me just saying to you, I'm working with somebody and they're really having a tough time. Well, that's not, that's me seeing the leper as a leper. So that's a bad assumption. That's not the kind of assumption I want for myself or anybody else. I want to believe in your empowerment. So when I say, so, oh, so sorry, oh, this you poor thing, I want to be stopping myself mm-hmm. and flipping that, the affirmation, flipping the assumption, because mm-hmm. I can't help somebody if I think they're weak, mm-hmm. if I believe that they're frail, right? If I believe that you are sick or you're upset and you just need to go through it, okay, surface level, that makes sense, but... True transformation for me and everyone else on the planet is I need to assume the best for you. Look mm-hmm. at you go. Yeah. Look at you doing your work. So yeah. you quit, so you quit your job today. Good for you. Yeah. Because at that place, we need to be realizing that literally we are connected to everyone. And again, part of me showing up in my mission, which is to create a world of powerful, happy people with my gifts and my compassion. Mm-hmm. I choose to do that by believing in my vision for you even though you may not be in your mission on the planet and that's Mm -hmm. faith and action in my world. So that I really, I resonate with what you said, right? Yeah. I had to learn about Reiki when I was 
going through massage school, acting school as mm -hmm. a, a, a Marine Corps reservist in Dallas, Texas. And all these things are, I'm touching people and I'm getting sick. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, not into the PT stuff. People are just crying for no reason, feeling great. I'm going home and having fights with strangers in a basket case. And I realized, mm -hmm. oh, something's happening. I'm picking up some things. So yes, try to heal people through that process. But really, as we keep talking, the evolution is to realize I'm really just healing myself. Yeah. Now I'm healing my, myself and my reflection in you, mm -hmm. my reflection in you, my reflection mm -hmm. in you. And then I notice my own thoughts when I think about a client who is really struggling and maybe they're going through a stage of the process where they're taking one step back before they take two steps forward because that's going to happen. It's not linear. Mm -hmm. I can catch myself if I'm having a bad day. I'm letting some negative thoughts about myself come down, go right without stopping them. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I might start thinking that client and they're suffering. Oh, wake up. Stop that prayer. Stop those thoughts. Because I know if I don't, the next thing I'm going to do is start talking about it. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time before I manifest more of that in my life. And right. that's, I have to do that because I've seen too much proof in my life. Yeah. We're going deep now. I know. I know. I, know but I can't. <laughs> so did you share the third phase? Because the, you said the Thank you. Um, Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So when we're awake, since mm -hmm. we have to take self care to mm -hmm. a whole new level, which is moment by moment, really watching our thoughts, watching how we speak, how we think, also learning to leap in the unknown more often, because mm -hmm. when you're awake, you have no history. When mm -hmm. you're awake, you don't know anything, except right. if you jump, someone's going to catch you. When we start doing that for a long period of time, when we're not pivoting, when we're not going, oh, okay, pivot, when it's like just instantaneous over, over and over again. Now we're in a state of being, right? Now we're bodhisattva, right? Now we are Christ consciousness. Now we're just positive 95% of the day. Yeah. Again, the tools that we use to be when we're asleep don't work when we're awake. What's really challenging for most people on the spiritual awakening kick that's more popular than ever because we yes. need it yes when we've gone through more than one or two or three spiritual awakenings and having the dark night repeat itself for five or ten years at a time and we finally come through like i did two years ago when i finally said okay it's my seventh time i get it i'm not going back anymore mm -hmm. now we want to focus on being guess what the tools that we use to break out of the boredom and to stay awake we gotta drop those too because now we're manifesting at the speed of thought yeah instantly literally seeing people's expressions change before our very eyes when we catch our thought and mm -hmm. let it go and again i like to say the demonstration of this was like when you watch kung fu carotene the classic series like he's all zenned out all the time Right? Uh -huh. He's in a state of being every guru in history, when they go through on their journey, they eventually get to this certain place where they just stay there. Yeah. Most of the time, right mm -hmm. now we're not even trying. That's like learning how to get awake, learning how to stay awake. And then we just be yeah. the same as we were when we were a child. So yeah, that's the three phases. Thank you for asking me that. Oh but no. I mean, that, that's so beautiful. I, I definitely can relate to the changing, having to change the tools. And then it's like your child all over again, right? Like le awkwardly learning how to do this. Okay. So what am, how am I, but then it's like repetition and keep it's over and over again. To get yourself there. Yeah. So and repetition to... always works, but it just really, there's a lot of hustle and repetition, right? So the conscious yeah. mind is a mechanism right mm -hmm. repeat repeat hustle hustle and then we finally break through we mm -hmm. think it's because we were hustling it takes a long time for conscious work mm -hmm. to actually impress the belief system which resides in the subconscious so yeah. we want to do both we want to work on the conscious mind yep which is affirmations definitely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. journaling 
mm -hmm. the self work, right? Mm -hmm. Getting triggered and letting it go. Mm -hmm. We also want to do the subconscious work, which is mm -hmm. letting things go faster, mm -hmm. assuming the best for yourself and everyone else. Yeah. And we start assuming with our prayer, assume when you go mm -hmm. to sleep, we're going to wake up in a better life instantly. And then we are doing both at the mm -hmm. same time, which is kind of like doing personal one on one work and then marrying it with the group work itself. We're working on both sides and then okay. we break through faster and easier. And all of a sudden we start being able to teach from experience okay. versus regurgitating some words we saw on social media that are trending this year. Oh, there's my that. goodness. Social media. What a blessing and a curse. Ah, what a great mirror right? for me to see where I'm at. Every yeah. time I put it on. What am I projecting today? Yeah. Oh, you there it is. Okay. okay, I'm going to turn that off. <laughs> I'm not going to look at that okay. today. That's a fresh perspective. I'll have to, I'll have to look at that. I'll have to look at it from that lens again. I have to ask about sure. the name of your business, Sacred Cobra. <laughs> okay. That's I, so I feel like it's, it's a good place to maybe like we can wrap up and I want to make sure actually we share, we shared a lot of like good books and mm -hmm. some mentors and gurus, and hopefully we can put that in the notes for people. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Real quick. So sacred Cobra is my animal name. Ah. So yeah, my, my business, okay. when I created my business six years ago, it was be the lead in your life because everything I saw, the answer for suffering is self leadership. Okay. It's about responsibility and the conscious mind. So I can choose to lead myself, even if I'm going to follow my employer, follow mm -hmm. a spiritual teaching, follow a community. Okay. If I'm consciously with awareness, choosing to lead myself, okay. two things are going to happen. When I fail, I'm going to see it as a growth opportunity because I'm going to see it's my responsibility. I'm not going to blame you. When I win, I'll take the credit. Okay. And so oftentimes I've seen very strong leaders unconsciously follow because they actually have a self-worth issue where they don't feel like they deserve anything. And they mm -hmm. could be running businesses, making tons of money, but because their internal work that no one else saw was it just followed a process. They follow what someone mm -hmm. else did before them. They can get the million dollars and still feel lonely and unworthy because they didn't do the conscious work. So when you fail, I want you to learn from it because you're responsible. When you win, I want you to take the credit for it. So that's the be in your life mm -hmm. concept. Now I took on the. I believe in the totem spirits. So two totem yes. animals have been very strong in my life ever since my very first Reiki session when I was a massage therapist and it stuck with me. One was the a black panther, okay. which turns out to be how I resonate with the subconscious and the isolation and the cosmic sense of where I am with everything. And it's a very mm -hmm. secluded animal too, which mm -hmm. I can definitely do. That's the mm -hmm. shadow animal for me. Now the King Cobra manifests in my, in my Reiki and in my visualizations for the men's organization, it kept coming up. I saw this King Cobra. And so for a few years in my men's work, I've just been King Cobra and I check in, my name is King Cobra and you watch everyone turns their head because not a lot of guys have that name. They get golden Cobra, black Cobra, but I've never met another King Cobra, but then through COVID going through the stages of my development. And I really had an attachment to my men's community and mm -hmm. saw my value and my mission. My service was how I could show up in there as a community coordinator for the San Antonio community. But I judged whether we were doing well or not based on me. Mm -hmm. But COVID shut everything down. Things started changing for me. Mm -hmm. I started leaning more and more into the man in the mirror. Yeah. And seeing how it reflected in my relationships with the women I love, with my daughter, with my mother, with my daughter's mother, mm. with talking to you, the women in my life and those sacred relationships are changing everything mm. for me. Now, fast forward to this last year, things are opening up again. And I have a lot of certifications within this men's community. And so I was able to go, I was invited to go staff an opportunity to do a a training. And at the end of the weekend, men were given opportunity to change their animal name if they wanted to, or now they call it infinite source okay. because of 
with the changes, we've dropped a lot of the tribal heritage. That we, okay. that we, a lot of that stuff has been an issue. Now okay. we go to the infinite source. And I'm, I've been a leader in this organization. Mm -hmm. And the leaders are kind of like the sexy rock stars because the leaders are the ones leading the men in a the process. They're the ones right. leading the show. A lot of responsibility, a lot mm -hmm. of power, a lot of service. Wonderful stuff, but I've changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know I'm a leader no matter what I do. I've been a leader my whole life, even when I didn't feel like I deserved it. Mm. I've shifted to a different space. Yeah. I'm more like an elder. And I've always been. Honestly, my very first job I ever wanted when I was a child was to be a minister. Really? Yeah. And I've done theater. I'm a singer and I've gotten awards locally for best leading actor in a musical. And that's cool. I did it. I made yeah. money. That's never been my passion though. Right. My passion was connecting with people, mm -hmm. breaking through all my stuff and their stuff. So at the very end of this activity, I walk up to the staff and they're using the staff and we do this. I'm no longer King Cobra. I am <laughs> so and And everyone was doing this process like one after another, one after another really quickly. And I walk up there and I just started convulsing and shaking. Mm -hmm. And I I had to close my eyes and just breathe because like, to me, I wasn't letting go of a name that no longer served me yeah. or didn't have the power anymore. I made a choice. Mm. So I, I gave myself permission to make a choice, even though it makes more sense. And I was already in leadership mm. and I look up and by the time I looked up, every single man in the room had stood all of a sudden. Wow. And in silence, and they were just supporting me. They'd already seen me confront some stuff and cry and push through my process that I was leading. And I just grabbed that staff and I just looked at everybody around. I said, I'm no longer King Cobra. I am Sacred Cobra. And everyone was like, oh. <laughs> and a couple of the guys that saw the difference in me, they were like, I heard like, I get it. They're like, that makes sense because they they've seen this man change since COVID where there was this King Cobra, this big personality. Yeah. Leaning into my sovereign and leading men ah, to taking more of a back seat. Yeah. I'm smiling a whole lot more now. Yeah. And I'm seeing men and women in my life going through horrible things. And yet I still yeah. see them on the other side as the primary choice. Mm. I had I made a choice and it's been, exciting ever since because I'm seeing more and more confirmation with the fact that it's not about whether one was stronger or not. Mm -hmm. You and I have the power to choose anything. Yeah. Regardless of what makes sense. Right. Sacred Cobra is my name. Yeah. That I speak within a sacred circle and mm -hmm. now the business awaken your reality. It's going to change every couple of years. I'm always evolving. Of but course. yeah, that's the answer to that question yeah. for you. It's a very powerful thing yeah. for me to honor my choice to go for the sacred over the mundane. Yeah. And that's a moment by moment choice. Yeah. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I, and it, it actually, it really comes full circle for us because we started the conversation from this like place of the warrior. Mm -hmm. King Cobra to me is like that warrior person where a sacred cobra is that spiritual tapped into divine, to the higher, to your higher power, to the universal love. And I think that is just so beautiful. And we can't ignore any of it. It's all part of me, right? So yes. do I want to be more warrior? What do I want? Do I want to be more warrior? Now, now get on our consciousness on the planet, still 80% mm -hmm. of us are still operating from the lower levels of energy. We operate from pride. We operate mm -hmm. from courage. That's why when someone is successful by persevering, mm -hmm. overcoming all the odds, it's easier to celebrate ourselves and for us to celebrate that person when they write that book, write that mm -hmm. movie. Mm -hmm. Or for those of us who are in the know, which again, there's more now than ever before because of what's happened on the planet. So when we were forced to live inside our homes and our apartments for almost two years, we had either our partner staring at us, which is our reflection, or we were alone in front of our reflection. So a lot of us awoke through that process. Yes, yes. We can all choose to stay in pride. 
Yeah. Prove that we're right over others. Prove and fight against injustices as the excuse. Mm -hmm. Or we can learn to let things go. Mm -hmm. And those problems actually disappear when we no longer have a problem with them. <laughs> but unless we've done it ourselves, it's all going to look woo woo. It's all going to look crazy until mm -hmm. you actually do it. It's a choice. Yeah. Oh, I have loved every minute of this, Anthony. Thank you, you so too. much. My and first I, done. This is wonderful. I know. And I, I know that you and I are going to have so many more conversations and uh, you've said little nuggets here and I'm like, Ooh, like I want to learn more about that. Go look that up. Go look that up. Go look that yeah, up. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, thank you so much. And, um, we look forward to catching you guys next time on Dishing on Divorce. Thanks, Thank everybody. You so much, and Anthony, and we'll, we'll put in the links to his groups and masterclass and all that fun stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mandy.